um, there's going to be some people that come to your mind after today's teaching and throughout today's teaching. There's going to be some of you that want to hear it again. There's going to be some of you that are going to be so encouraged today that you're really going to want to hear it again. And so I always try to record our teachings. I try to do that so that I can give that to you all and you can share it with other people or listen to it again. But in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 13, it says, As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Now why is this verse so powerful? As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, saith the Lord, is who this is. And so God has just compared the comfort of a mother to his, his comfort. Now that is so powerful because if you've ever been comforted by the word of God, if you've ever been comforted with the singing about the truths of the word of God, if you've ever been touched and blessed by God, then to see this truth in the word of God and see how he relates to as one whom his mother Comforted, so will I comfort you, saith the Lord, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Now, when this is making this reference in Jerusalem, I don't want to get into all about the Old Testament, but I just want to tell you that in the New Testament, in the New Testament church, you are the Jerusalem because you are the temple. That's what the representation of Jerusalem was here in this passage. It was where the temple of God was, is where the presence of God was. And so you are the temple of God. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the living God. So when we see this comparison as mothers, some of you are saying, Well, you know what? I don't, I'm not a mom. Some of you might say, I'll, I'll never be a mother. Or some of you might say, I don't really like that name, mother, because of my experience. But I want to share something with you. The definition of mother is a woman who nurtures a child. And I dare say, probably no one is void or exception to that. Have you ever done something for a child? Ever taken them somewhere? Have you ever bought anything for one? Have you ever fed them or cleaned up after them? worked in the nursery you my dear our mother too and as one whom his mother comforted so will I comfort you saith the Lord and you know what I found that God is really profound in his truths and in his teachings do you all know what I found I found out that 86% of nurses are women. I want you to stew on that just for a second when you think about women and you think about mothers. Because the act of a mother is simply nurturing a child. And we can all do this. But I want you to think about this statistic of 86% of nurses are women. We are nurturers, ladies. And when God makes this representation in his word, it is a powerful, powerful truth. I'm not going to read every single text today for sake of time, but I am going to make reference to them and what they teach us about the comforter of all comforters. So if you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want you to know that you have that comforter within you. But you also still have your physical mind, right? So sometimes our minds play tricks on us. Have y'all ever dealt with anxiety or depression or any kind of like a worry or fear that just kind of like overcame you and your mind just was playing tricks on you? You thought worse things were happening, worse things were coming. I can tell you that we could probably all raise our hands because our minds will do this, play tricks on us. But you know what? You have the Holy Spirit of God inside of you if you are Christ's child. And that Holy Spirit, the Bible teaches us, 
many things about. We're just going to look at seven things very briefly today about these things about the Holy Spirit. First one is in 1 Corinthians 3.16. So that's where it tells us that he is dwells inside of us. That means he stays. Moms, they should always know you're available. Women, the people in your life should always know that they can count on you. That you're available to them. That you will you will stay. You will be that for them. The Holy Spirit does. And we should. And in John 14, 26, it tells us that mothers are teachers. Or that the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And so I think about the Holy Spirit being a teacher. And it says a teacher of all things. I think about how mothers, don't we teach, we instruct, we educate, we coach, we counsel, we mentor, we guide. Do we not? You didn't know that there were so many things attached to you. So when you think about the Holy Spirit, the comforter of all comforts, and these verses teaching us about the things of the Holy Spirit. And when God says in his word in Isaiah 66, 13, that there's one whom his mother comforted, so will I comfort you. And we see these correlations as women, don't we? In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 11, it tells us that the Lord gives us gifts. That the comforter of all comforters gives us gifts. You know, there's not a greater gift that you can give to another human being than the gift of eternity and that soundness, that perfection that we find in Jesus Christ. You know, we made these recommendations today, didn't we? But how much greater can we recommend our Savior? to our children and our grandchildren and the people around us in our everyday society of what he has done for us to recommend him. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13, it tells us that we are sealed. And you know what that means? We're sealed by the Holy Spirit because I'm speaking about these, these, these attributes of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit seals us. You know what he's doing when he seals you? He's marking you as his. Your identity as a child of God, you've been marked by his Holy Spirit. Eliza, I marked you because I chose you. Heidi, Taylor, Karen. Your identity, Eliza, is mine. You're mine. And see, I am the Father's because he chose me. And you, if you're already not the Father's, can be because he chooses us all. But he gives us a free will. He says, I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to make you a robot. I want you to be real. I want when you really love people that to be real. Because if I forced you to do this, then you're not real. And God has marked you. He has chosen you. You are his children. And you know, as mothers and women of this society, they should know that is somebody I can count on. That is someone I can turn to. In Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, it tells us that the Holy Spirit is our intercessor. Do you know what an intercessor is? It's an advocate. It's somebody that works on our behalf. And in that scripture, it says that we don't even know the things that we need. So the Holy Spirit asks, goes to the Father, God, and asks for those things for us, for his people. Moms, do you advocate for yours? I know you have. If you... If you have children or if you have other people in your life that you are nurturing as women, you are there for them. We advocate for them. 
And you know what I was thinking about about this fact is that that passage of scripture tells us that we don't even know what we need to ask for. And the Father, through the Spirit, through that great comforter, takes care of it for us and asks the things that, that we don't even know we need. And so one day I was out in my, and I have this illustration, I think it's going to help that to be driven home. I was out in my daughter Taylor's little workshop. She's got a little, she likes to restore furniture. And I was out there with her and she had this glass jar, a mason jar out there, and it was, it was full of sawdust. Now, if you know my Taylor, you know she is a perfectionist and she don't have anything out of line. She don't have stuff cluttered up and everything else. And I'm like, well, why do you have a jar of sawdust out here in your shop? And she says, you know, mom, she says, I take that sawdust and I mix it with some stuff and she says you know when I find a piece of furniture a lot of people don't see what I see I know I can feel that crack and feel that hole with that mixture of sawdust and the Holy Spirit knows what we need to fill in all the cracks all the gaps all the holes and make it like new. And she says, you know, you can't even tell when I get done. You can't, you can't even tell it, it, it they even had a crack in it. Isn't that what the Lord does for us? Hey moms, it's all right to advocate. It's all right to fight on their behalf. And women, it's all right to do this, to fill in the gaps, to talk to the Lord. He'll lead you in the way that you need to go. In John chapter 16, verses 7 and 8, it tells us that the Holy Spirit reproves. That means he corrects. Look, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. He's not backing in jail, he, and he is not doing evil deeds to you. No, this world has plenty of that to offer on its own. But to reprove means to correct, to instruct. Right? This is what the Lord does for us. You know, uh, I may have shared this with y'all in one of my other teachings, I don't remember, but I have a daughter named Maylee. She's the one that didn't end up making it today. And when she was two years old, I tell you that she was, a, she still, she still is the strongest willed child that I have. See, she really is. Y'all y'all got them, the, the ones that are really strong willed. They are, and, and not in a bad way, right? I mean, when they were little, it was tough, wasn't it? But when she was two years old, she was a strong willed child. And she was walking out of a store with her dad at the grocery store one day, and he was holding her hand, and she decided, I'm going to take off. Because I see the car or whatever she saw, she wanted to take off. And she took off. She got away from his hand. And she took off out into the, the as they came out of the grocery store, out into, right into the parking lot at two years old. And her dad went over there, and he says, no, Maylie. And he pulled her back. And it broke her heart because dad never had to correct her. It was always my job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. But he, he had to correct her. And it just broke her heart. But you know what that purpose is of correcting? Is to, for safety. To benefit. To bless. To keep. To hold you. You see, your God hasn't made you to be a robot. No, he didn't make you to be perfect and praise him all the time and everything and everything that he maybe would enjoy to see you do. He, will, he gave you free will. But he, as your loving father, will correct. Oh, he will. And he's so gentle about it. You know, there's things that we blame the father for that he deserves no blame at all. Because we have an enemy. See, we learn this in physics. There's an opposite to everything. Just like nighttime, there's day. Just like good, there's evil. Right? So we need to remember this in our lives and, and not be blaming the Father for the things that He has not done. Because He is there for you. And He loves you. And He will correct you. But I want to go ahead and turn to this last passage as we close on this seventh point about the Holy Spirit and relating it to us as women, as mothers. 
We're turning over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and I'm going to read verses 17 through 21 in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is a beautiful passage. I know the train is passing. Can you all hear me back there, Diana? Can you hear me? Okay. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing our trespasses unto them, not, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Be ye reconciled to God, for he hath made him, who was that? Jesus Christ. To be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In this closing time, ladies, women, do you know that as a child of God, if you are a child of God, and that's just simply by your faith. Some people say, well, you got to live like this, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. But all of those things are carnal things. God says, I don't look on the carnal things. I look on the heart. I look at your spirit. And all you have to do is believe to receive. The Bible says, he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. He has reconciled us through Jesus Christ. He has made everything in us that's wrong, right. Do you know what happened at the cross? All my problems became his. All of them. Do you got a list? I'm 46 years old. I got quite the list by now, right? And all of them have been taken and dealt with. And I, I don't have any more. They're not mine. Jesus took them all. He has reconciled me. He has restored me. And made me right with my father. Now I don't know who this is for. But the Lord has put it on my heart for days now. And it's a very uh, different kind of thing to share. But it's my first memory. And the Lord says. I want you to share this. With you all. He's put it on my mind to share. It's my first memory. And it's very simple. And it goes like this. I'm in a sandbox. When I was probably two or three years old. And I was outside, alone, I thought, but I wasn't. I've never been alone, you see. And it's not because I'm so good and she can speak so well or anything that you might could say about me, ladies, it's not. It's because the Father has always been here for us. And he's not going to force himself into your heart. He says, I made you to be real people, not fakes and phonies. You know, sometimes we find that in the Christian society, don't we? But you know what? Sometimes we find it in the world. People are just not who they say they are. But you know what? God the Father is always who he says he is. And as mothers and women, it's all right to try to help to make right the wrongs, just as Christ did. Because Christ liveth in me, is what the Bible says. And it says, in the life which I now live in the Father, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And if you know God and you know his son Jesus, that he lives within you, and his power is inside of you to be used in this world. In all of these ways, all these seven ways, and more and more and more. And he will give you strength when you don't know where it came from. He will visit you when you don't know what that is. He'll give you peace that passeth all understanding. Ladies, we are at a close with our teaching. And what a treat it has been to share with you about the Holy Spirit. That is the part of God 
that he's here with the people. That's what changed whenever Jesus Christ came and paid the debt and he conquered sin, death, and the grave. It changed everything because we got to have that Holy Spirit inside of us. Let's close in a word of prayer. If y'all don't mind, if you would just, even if you don't pray and you're not a, a religious person, that's okay. If you don't mind, if you don't mind just bowing your heads, just so that you would uh, respect the person next to you. Ladies, I, I believe that we're all here for a reason today. Some of you here for more of a reason than any of us know. Because God is bigger than I am. He's bigger than the person that asked you to be here. He's bigger than anything. And I believe that God has you here for this, just such a time as this. You may never hear a teaching like this for the rest of your life. And so as we go to the Lord in prayer, I'm going to pray as well. And if you don't know him, but you say, you know what? There's something just drawing me. There's something about this that's different. And I want to give you that opportunity to come to know the Lord today. What a treat that would be for you to have that presence. And let's have a word of prayer together. Just say something like this. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died on the cross to pay the price for my sins. Please come into my heart today and save my soul. Thank you, Jesus for always being here with me and for loving me and for restoring me, filling in all the gaps. I praise you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, ladies. I tell you, what a treat. Thank you. Thank you so much.